Good evening, this is The Probe. Tonight we decode the decisions taken by the 955 NPP superdelegates at their conference yesterday. From unexpected twist to strategic maneuvering, we'll bring you an in-depth analysis that sheds light on the conference's impact and implications for the party and the nation at large. Plus, we'll delve a bit more into the showdown expected in November 2023. Officially, the journey to who leads the NPP into the 2024 elections has begun. Will it be Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Kennedy Ohenie Japong, Alan Kujotre Mantin, Dr. Fia Koto, or will it be Ade Nimo or Boachie Jakon, who both polled nine votes? Or will Dr. Baumia repeat the 68.15 percentage gap or widen it further come November? There are fallouts also from the conference, including alleged attacks on some agents. Also, some persons, including Kennedy Ejepong and Hope Senadoye, will get to face the party's disciplinary committee. The General Secretary, Justin Kudya Frimpong, will join us briefly. And so will Kwabene J. Ejepong, a presidential aspirant, also in that just ended race. Frederick Opari Ansa is a leading member of the Dr. Baumia campaign team. He's with me in the studios. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Good to have you in the studio. Thank you so much uh, for you. your company uh, this evening. So please buckle up as we delve into the realm of politics, power and perspective in this review of yesterday's NPP Superdelegates Conference. We are live on Joy News. We are on Joy 99.7 FM. We are on myjoyonline.com. On DSTV channel, where it's 421. Go TV is 125. This is The Probe. I am MFA Apau. A quick turnaround. We get talking. Please do stay. So far, everything has gone on quite smoothly. Um, it's just that a few people are beginning to think that maybe there's need to look, take a look at the constitution and avoid this uh, so-called electoral college. It's expensive. It's also sometimes divisive. But I believe that in the fullness of time, we shall take a look at the constitution and look at that aspect of it. But that, having said that, I am happy. Soon are we hoping that will happen? Well, the constitution was supposed to have been uh, revised about two years ago. Everything was done, but we keep postponing it. But this was not one of the issues that had been sort of highlighted for discussion. But I sincerely believe that we should have a look at it. There have been incidents, some cases we've heard in some parts of the country. Really, the issues about unity going forward right now because of the concerns that has been raised from the various factions. As Council of Elders, you have a task ahead of you after this. How is it going to be? Very much so. I mean, when you have elections of this nature, there are bound to be difficulties, but we will try and resolve them. As far as we are concerned, um, we didn't expect 100% satisfaction on all fronts. We have problems, if, if we do have problems, we have means of resolving them. And that's what we do. We are one family. We belong to the same stables. And there's no need that why we should be falling over ourselves. We have done what the Constitution says we must do. And I believe uh, we, we should be able to resolve any issues, if there are any. But so far, Nothing come to life. There is an elections committee who will be looking at issues, and if there are uh, some that needs further um, sort of discussions, we will take so take it. Yeah. As you see, we had made all our regulations in totality, looking at all relevant possibilities. So this is actually nothing new. Someone mentioned uh, the, possi uh, the possibility of the two persons joining the four to make six. I said that is not possible under uh, NPP terms. The present arrangement and exercise must produce five and no more than five. Therefore, accordingly, we had earlier put into regulations that in case this should happen, which now you see has happened, next week Saturday, there will be a runoff between the two so that one will be 
or otherwise we continue to have them contest among themselves until we have one and that is the essence of a runoff so a week today if no one has stepped aside for the other then you look forward to another uh, election for the fifth person at the end of the day we are going to present five contestants for the grand finale thank you very much but Chema, is it the case that the whole delegate will vote for the two candidates? Is that what it is? The, the whole. Entire, over the, the whole. Mm. Because we can, how do we select some people to vote for them? Maybe the national executives alone mm. or any other. No. Those, when there's a tie in any election, in order to break the tie, those who voted in the first instance will be the same people who will vote in the tie instance. That is, is the rule. Is there a possibility where the battle will impress upon a candidate to perhaps step down for another? Oh, those can be discussions, vote. but as for us, what we know is that we will get ready. And if someone steps down, then of course, that's the end of the exercise. We have the five, by virtue of somebody having stepped down. But otherwise, a week today, there will be a contest between the two. I mean, hand me there. Someone can start with a very poor performance. It's a bronze. It's yeah. not even a silver or a gold. It's a bronze. If you are going by athletics. Even if it is firewood, we are okay with that. We are going to make it on the 4th of November. The grassroots are yearning for Alan Chermanti to be the flag bearer. That one, no two ways about that. I don't want to see Agro Beswa if you are not part. But what we are seeing now does not look like Agro Nest. To have Job Protection Association for. I am saying it. But it's a national the council of elders. Who is that? Delegates, whether they receive money or not. You ask them. Do you have evidence that delegates were paid? These are ministers. This is a national I council of elders. That nobody would deny a fact that when you are contesting an election, you don't pay money. Mm -hmm. But the quantum. Did Alan pay money? The quantum. Did Alan pay money? Huh? Did Alan pay money? Oh, no, I am saying that. If I sit here and say no, I am a hypocrite. Okay. If I say no, I am a hypocrite. How, ah, how, how can you believe someone saying that I'm contesting an election? I did not give a dime. So we have something small, small that we give it to them for TNT and, and the rest. Small. What's but small? some people, hey. I am a scan home. Allegations, allegations that you haven't been able to prove. Huh? They've paid money. They've paid money. This is the probe. And just gone by, you've been hearing from Hoopston Adoye. Uh, he's a member of um, the campaign team of Alan Kuduche Manting. Also earlier, we had the elder, uh, the chairman of the National Council of Elders, Mr. Hakman Ouswajiman, interacting with us earlier. And then also you had Professor Michael Kwe, who leads the election committee uh, for the Superdelegates um, Conference. And he's been telling us about what will happen going forward because of uh, the sixth and fifth candidates that we are getting, both getting nine. The information we are getting this evening is that the team, of Boachie Jaakon as well as Adenimo are currently in a meeting, uh, you know, deliberating on who steps aside uh, for the other to go through into the top five or whether we would have to go through the runoff um, as is expected to happen uh, on Saturday, uh, come Saturday. But um, this is something we'll be checking on as and when we get uh, the latest information on that. We'll bring that to you. But we, we know that the party has also issued a statement um, today, um, earlier today, and five persons, including Hobson Yaovi Adoye, uh, Musa Suleimana, Charles Dochi Yao Addo, and Raphael Patrick Safo, as well as uh, Kennedy Ohenye Japong, who is an aspirant also. He pulled, um, he was the second in yesterday's race. They are to face the party's disciplinary committee for obvious reasons. I'm sure you've seen the videos uh, that's gone viral on social media, especially that of Kennedy Ohenye Japong. But thankfully, we've been joined on the phone by the General Secretary of the NPP, Justin Kodia Frimpon. Thank you so much uh, for your time here on the probe. Um, so first off, we'll talk about um, the meat particularly of this particular statement, but let me get your own assessment of yesterday's Superdelegate Conference from where you sit as the General Secretary. Uh, what's really your impressions of how uh, the Delegate uh, Conference went yesterday? Um, good evening, MFA, and good evening to your cherished viewers. Um, I must say that the exercise, by and large, was very successful. And I want to commend the Lessons Committee, uh, which is headed by Right Honorable 
speak, uh, former speaker, um, Professor Michael Quay and his team. They've done a yeoman's job from the time that the National Council inaugurated that committee um, throughout the process of engaging with the aspirants, listening to their concerns, uh, building consensus uh, with the aspirants to come out with the rules and guidelines, and also seeing to a very successful superdelegate election. I also want to take this opportunity to commend the Electoral Commission and also um, the Ghana Police Service, as well as all stakeholders who played a role, whether directly or indirectly, to ensure a successful superdelegate Congress. Well, there were pockets of issues that were recorded, including uh, top of the list is the Northeast um, situation, uh, where we're told that an agent of Alan Germanting was beating after a scaffold there. Um, what, what's your preliminary uh, findings in terms of what exactly happened and what will happen going forward with that particular case? Uh, MFR, you also agree with me that we have never had a perfect election in this world. Certainly in every election, there was one or two isolated cases, but as and when those cases come up, it's how you deal with it that determines whether um, you, are, you, are, you, are in, you are in for a free and uh, fair uh, election. So yes, um, several activities happened, and some of them that uh, were video evidence, the party uh, led by myself has taken a, a step to address those issues. And there are several allegations also coming up from some parts of the, of the voting centers. And one of them is what you, are, you, you have said. Um, yes, I've, I've seen a video of a person who has been assaulted, but I've not been able to get the full facts. So the person who was sent to the region by the elections committee, definitely when he gets to Accra, will, go, will give full report to the elections committee and the party will take the necessary action. Now, um, to the five persons that you've mentioned in your statement uh, to face a disciplinary committee of your party, at least um, with these four, we'll talk about Kennedy Ejapong shortly, but these four persons that you mentioned in their hopes in Yao Via Doe, Musa Suleimana, Charles Dochiao, Ado, and Rafael Patrick Safa, what really is their offense? Well, as, as stated in the content of the letter, uh, it's based on uh, video evidence and uh, uh, photographic material that we have. So, um, they are to respond to all those activities that happened. And we, as a party, uh, consider it as a possible breach of Article 3 and 4 of our Constitution. So when they appear before the disciplinary committee, based on the information that we have, they should be able to explain as to what really happened. And the disciplinary committee will take decisions on it. Mm. Well, with Hobson, the Alvia Doyer, for instance, there are concerns that he raises about vote-buying incidents that occurred with this particular superdelegates conference. Is that one of the reasons why he's appearing? And is that one of the allegations that the party will be looking into? Because I know you are vote-buying, at least on paper. Well, so when the person who alleges appear before the disciplinary committee, then he pushes it. So, but as a party, if you read Article 3 of our Constitution, it's a duty of members to uphold the good name of the party and to also promote unity within the party. So if any actions or, or commission or mission is something that uh, seeks to be a constitution, that the president has to appear before to explain himself. So. Okay, it, it appears we are losing you along the line. Um, so I'll, I'll make it brief so that we can let you go. But the issue about Kennedy or Henie Japon, uh, there are those, at least, we've seen political scientists particularly condemn uh, the comments and that he was making in that video, at least we don't have the full complement of the video, for which reason uh, the party is going to investigate this. But is this not unbecoming of Kennedy or Henry Japon to the extent that he's a presidential candidate, an aspirant, in a race that the party considers very important? Is the party really taking seriously the comments of Kennedy or Henry Japon at all? Well, well, as a party, no single individual is above the constitution. But it appears, it appears, Mr. Hine Japon, um, is above the party. Well, you are making the allegation, so maybe I don't know which angle you are coming from. But as a party, they are treating every member at the same, the same strength and the same um, uh, rules. So at the end of the day, as we've indicated, that uh, the number of uh, personalities. Right, and so we are not that is uh, the past. As and when issues come before the party, 
Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Okay. Korea, we didn't, we didn't get any bits about the bits that you were talking about, the fact that nobody is above the party. We kept yes, losing so, you. Um, is it better now? Yes, much better, sir. Yes, so as I indicated, as a party, we will treat everyone uh, the same, the same proportion without reference to whether the person is a presidential aspirant or a party member. They are all party members, so at the end of the day, after when we get the issues, we will deal with it. And just like we have um, um, submitted um, what happened to the disciplinary committee, we are just waiting to hear what they will do. Is the party happy seeing a presidential candidate? speaking to the president of the republic and the vice president in that manner is this just going to be an internal matter or it would go beyond the party well i still retain that position as a party we treat everyone equally so it does not matter whether a person is a presidential aspirant or not so far as a person acting or inaction uh, potential has uh, the tendency of breaching the rules and and, uh, and 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 what is stated in the constitution we will deal with it accordingly Okay. Mr. Korea, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Justin Korea Frimpong is the General Secretary of the NPP, and um, that's the statement that they issued earlier, and uh, we've been taking a look at it. And Mr. Parijan is in the studio uh, with me. Thank you so much uh, once again uh, for your company. W what a thank campaign you. has been for you, uh, the team. Let's talk about it. How has it been? Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me use the opportunity to... Um, Say hello to all your viewers across the country, and I know sometimes you are even on uh, other channels mm -hmm. elsewhere. Um, I'll start off by congratulating the party on holding such a, a beautiful event. Of course, as the General Secretary rightly said, no such event can go without um, a couple of hitches, mm -hmm. and so that is to be expected. I also want to use the opportunity to thank the delegates for how they've conducted themselves um, yesterday across the country. I was in the central region uh, and I looked and watched how uh, all delegates came and peacefully cast their uh, votes and then either waited uh, for the results to be uh, declared or left peacefully uh, to wherever they came from. Uh, let me also congratulate the aspirants for this showmanship, of sportsmanship, if mm. you will. Um, it is not easy to contest uh, such an election at this level. Uh, it takes courage. It takes a lot of planning, strategizing, to be able to even enter uh, such a race. Mm. Um, I know not all the 10 um, aspirants were successful in uh, entering the last five. Mm -hmm. But like when you go to the Olympics and they tell you that the object of the Olympics is to participate and not necessarily to win a medal. The fact that the likes of Kobine Japong, Jogate, and the rest were there shows that our party has the men. I have told several people in the past that how many times do you see the NDC go into presidential primary and they have even five people contesting uh, they are, they are slot. And I think the maximum we've seen probably is two or three. But come to the MPP, we've done 17, we've done 10. We've... And you've been heavily criticized for that because it but, appears But that... it is a democratic party and we open our arms and make sure that if anybody who has the capacity to lead the party present themselves. Are you suggesting that the NDC is not um, conducting a democratic process for which reason we are uh, I, I, I said numbers. we have the men. Okay. So in that regard, they maybe they are a bit deficient in having uh, the same uh, caliber and quality of men as we have in our party. Mm. And so that is why normally you see there's a shortage of aspirants in the NDC. So I commend uh, my people for getting out there, putting themselves out. If you didn't make it this time, it is not the end of the road. Mm. There are several opportunities within the party mm -hmm. for you to join the campaign as we roll along. Now, to those that made it, I say kudos. Mm. Um, I would wish, for instance, the uh, two who placed fifth, and the party is now going to decide whether to have a runoff or not, to reassess the situation and decide for themselves whether indeed they want to put the party uh, through this. Mm. The emotions, the campaigning, the race, and the cost whether it is prudent to fight for faith position. Mm. 
as it were. Um, sometimes it might be smarter to pull out at this time and let the party hail you for saving it all this trouble than to really go through only to prove a who, point Who that. should pull out at this point for who to enter? Well, that is entirely between the two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would even urge both of them to pull out. pull out. Mm -hmm. Yes, but entirely a decision for them. Even for those who made it, it is sometimes necessary at this point to begin to reconsider, reassess mm -hmm. whether it is worth pursuing. I have been a member of somebody's team before in 2014 and 31st August came and I did advise that I think where we are it might be prudent to pull out. You're talking about Alan? Yes, mm -hmm. but we didn't. We continued and we slid from 8% to 4%. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it gets to this point, it is important and prudent to sit and do a proper assessment on the situation mm -hmm. before taking a, a further step okay. forward. But, well, thankfully, um, knowing your background as well, since you brought it up, um, looking at uh, Mr. Alan Chamantin's performance, many are aware of the view that at least top two, um, whatever happens, at least first or second, and we saw third instead, at least you've been with him for some time, what could have cost him there? Well, I, I wasn't surprised. Every um, thing I saw on the campaign trail, and a lot of people will bear me out that I told them Alan will come third. Mm. Uh, everywhere I went to to campaign for this first round, every person I engaged, every delegate, I could tell was either uh, trying to make a choice between Dr. Baumia and uh, Ken Ohine Japan. In few instances, in some of the regions, would you hear of talk about Alan? And so that was clear to me that there was, there was no way he was going to come. Why? Because uh, this is a man that many consider well, when, has when, really served the party. When you, when you also measure the strength of the campaigns that are being run, mm -hmm. it is clear that the strength of Alan's campaign is nowhere near the two other campaigns. Is it money? Not in terms of money, but even effort. Uh, strategy, um, organization. When you look at the two leading campaigns, you can see it is there. I have followed Alan's, um, what do they call it? The Deba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his Debas. And I tell you, they held one of the Debas. And I know for a fact a particular constituency that was present had only about 100 people there. A constituency mm -hmm. that has about 700 delegates. Mm -hmm. But because of the way the organization went. But of course, because there's a huge, large number of people, probably three, four constituencies, mm -hmm. if you are not careful and you don't properly take a rota of attendance, you would think it's, it's successful, it's large. And so the seriousness that I have seen in the past, in 07, in 2010, in 2014, that the campaign of Alan attached to its own work, mm -hmm. I don't see it in this campaign. So you foresee that November 4, that will be, there will be a similar performance? From the if, if we are talking about how this uh, will translate to the November 4th. Mm -hmm. Because I've you heard see, your team say there's going to be a repeat of what we saw yesterday. It or will, even there will a wider be, margin. There will be a repeat or a wider margin. Okay. And the reason is very simple. Um, the voters in this election, and in any election, you have people going to vote with a plethora of reasons. Okay, several uh, reasons. Somebody votes for an aspirant because of a certain personal relationship, mm -hmm. because of um, a certain deed the person may have done towards them. Several issues. Now, of course, there is the group that vote because they believe that is the candidate that will win. And normally, you have the bigger chunk of those people voting for the one that emerges ahead of the pack. Mm -hmm. Now, as you go into the next election, the proportion of people who will be voting for uh, aspirants based on a certain personal relationship and certain personal deeds will reduce. Mm -hmm. So you will be left with a bigger proportion of delegates who are actually going to vote for an aspirant because they believe he has what it takes to lead the party to victory. Okay. So the broader base of the party will be filled with people who are looking to actually break the eight. It is not because this man helped me pay my son's school fees 
or this guy helped me to get a job in the past and so I'm considering voting for him. Mm. So you see that personal contact between aspirants and delegates become minimal. Mm. For which reason you are truly going to get the person who emerges being the one that the party really believes in. Okay, well, the, the allegation, at least, um, that has been leveled against your campaign, at least Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's campaign, is vote buying. And that many of those who voted yesterday are just there to secure their jobs. They didn't want to go against, at least, their employers. And the fact that it appears that it's just money that you used to win or get the margins that you got yesterday. Vote buying, pure and simple, allegations leveled against your campaign. So You've marshaled the entire force of the government so first for this all, campaign. You know, what is interesting when I hear this thing is, I think of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. I am not a minister of state. Mm -hmm. I don't serve on any government board. Mm -hmm. I hold no government portfolio. Mm -hmm. So what about me? What am I looking for? I'm looking for appointment in Akufo You're securing your future, aren't you? Which future? So, what, so those working for the other campaigns, mm. what are they trying to secure? Me, my future. Mm. Or the future of their unborn children. Mm. Come on. You're not influenced. Now, you didn't influence delegates. You now, didn't pay money We to will delegate. address that. But now, look at it this way. There are 275 constituency chairmen. Were they appointed or elected? There are 272 regional offices. Were they appointed or elected for them to be trying to protect some appointment? Mm. And these are the two largest groups in the superdelegates. The 80 diasporans who came mm -hmm. to vote, what appointment are they trying to protect? Mm. The Council of Elders, about 40 plus of them, the past national offices, what kind of appointment are they trying to protect? You have um, 100. 37 members of parliament in our group. Mm -hmm. They are elected. They are not appointed. So what appointment are they protecting? So this thing that has been created, that the super delegates or special delegates are a certain group of people who are trying to protect a certain interest because if they don't vote for a particular candidate, they will lose something. Mm -hmm. It's only a pigment of, uh, a pure pigment of people's imagination. It doesn't exist anywhere. It's not real. Okay. Hold that thought. Let me bring in uh, <laughs> Engineer Kobunai J. Ejepong. Uh, thankfully, he's joined us via Zoom. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I've just been told you've been on since we started. Thank you so much uh, for your company. So what really happened? You are number six and you got six. Is it the lack of money? What exactly <laughs> happened? Very much. I mean, I've, um, thank you very much and to your viewers. I've been following your program. Very interesting. Um, it's not the first time I've gone through this kind of process. So I found it exciting. I love campaigning. Um, I'm an eternal Democrat. I believe in majority rule. Once the majority decides, the majority decides. Um, I enjoyed going around the 16 regional capitals, meeting the super delegates, selling my message and my vision for ushering in a new dawn in Ghana, because I think after 30 years, of democracy. We need to rethink the things that we are doing to regenerate our leadership and also look at our, what our understanding of public service should mean to us, to the country. We need a lot more public spirited individuals running for public office and doing the things that would ensure that there's a collective security for all Ghanaians and the welfare of especially the underprivileged. So that was really my, my platform. And, and yes, it was disappointing I couldn't make their cut. Mm. Um, and that's fine. I accept the result. The party, the super delegates have decided. And uh, as uh, someone who believes in the majority rule, that's it. You have to respect the decision of the majority. Were you surprised at the results, though? Because many tipped you uh, to go into the top five. Yes, I what really happened? That I, I was surprised I didn't make the cut. I, I, I thought that I would list before. But these things happen I mean, in, in elections. Look, you have to take the highs with the lows in life. You know, so you have to be tough, emotionally strong, mentally strong. You go into a battle and 
It's not like a football match. There cannot be a draw. You either you win or you lose. So you prepare yourself for the two outcomes. And that's what I did. So I'm very tough. And uh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm carrying on with my life. I just want to see the party genuinely united, genuinely on a platform to reconnect with Ghanaians and ensure that we restore those cherished values as a political tradition and also to win the confidence of the Ghanaian peoples to stand a chance of winning a third elusive consecutive election. So it's something that hasn't happened, which is very difficult. And so I want to see the party work in tandem. And I'm happy with the way the election itself was conducted. I think uh, kudos to the elections committee. Mm. Um, so far, I mean, all the reports I got, apart from one or two places that there were some physical altercations we were unnecessary. I think the, it was a simple walking process, no gatherings, no addresses. Just go and vote and uh, express your opinion. Um, I don't believe in looking for excuses because at the end of the day, everybody went and voted expressing their free will. Okay. No, I don't think anybody held anybody's tongue, you know, so... Um, whether they were influenced, were given money and all that, it's neither here nor there. I don't like that. And when you, we have an election, mm -hmm. and we should accept the result and move on. That's what I claim. Did you pay money to delegates? <laughs> Not for me to disclose those things to you. I mean, when you travel around the country, um, you go to Dubai and somebody has come from Ketekrachi to come and meet you, to hear you address them. The, 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 the decent thing to do is to try and subsidize their transport. So a little transport money, that is not buying. It's something that we've done from 1992. I did it when I contested in 98, in 2007, in 2014, when I won as general secretary. So um, all the things, the shenanigans that people orchestrate, I think for me as a politician, you should focus on the big picture. Mm. Focus on your attempt to win the vote. And if you are lucky to do so, you thank God for that, and you carry on. If you don't win, you go back and you re strategize and lick your wounds, as I'm licking mine. Well, these subsidies, though, what constitutes subsidies like this that you give to delegates? I don't, I don't, why are you so interested in these things? They because it's an allegation that has not, come up yeah. against at least. Um, I don't about anybody's allegation. I'm mm -hmm. telling you mm -hmm. what I do mm -hmm. when I travel around. Is, uh, I mean, I go around and I meet people. Uh, are, are, you not, are, are you not worried, <laughs> Mr. Ejepong, for instance, the, the, the fact that maybe you may have given some subsidy, maybe 20 cities or 50 cities, and others go and they give as much as maybe 1,000 cities or 500 cities, could it not influence their votes against you? Maybe you have a better message, but because of the subsidies that people give to others, it makes it difficult for them to vote for you. They That's still the have the power of choice. Mm. They have the power of free expression and they should be able to vote their conscience. There can be no excuses for how you vote, whether you, you vote because you're given money or not. Um, I, I don't want to spend too much time. Okay. What is important is that they, they had the time to express their free will. And I think I saw in most of the companies and the, t the media covered the event almost minute by minute. And, I didn't see any, everybody was free there, go and vote, you have your ballot, you vote. There can be no excuses. So I think that we should just respect the result and, and then carry on. Okay, in hindsight though, is there anything uh, you would have done differently in your campaign or messaging, you would say? I think um, all across board. Um, I've listened to reviews from academia, CSOs, polit politicians. But somebody even said I had the best message of all. And, <laughs> I think it was internet and all that. I think I had a very strong platform. That six point plan for Ghana um, to rescue our country, I think is very strong. And I, I hope that the winner takes some portions of it. I think it's still valid. And uh, we, we need to change the country, the way we do our politics, our orientation. We've got to recalibrate our values and our attitude towards set public service in our country. And to understand that party politics is it's, it's itself, the political parties are vehicles for development of our country. They are not an end in itself. Mm. It is about developing our country. And so I'm very passionate about the transformation of the Ghanaian in our country and restoring our cherished values.
putting our hands on our chest and seeing that we are Ghanaians, we are patriotic, we love our country, we are prepared to sacrifice and serve our country. And that's why my, my campaign was based on what I call the triple S doctrine, service, sacrifice, and selflessness. Once you've been able to do that, you are at peace with yourself. I think Ghanaians and the politicians to feel a sense of fulfillment in serving their country and not expecting anything in return. What okay. worries me today mm. is everybody seems to think about what they can get out of their country rather than what they can give back to their party or their country. And that is what I want to bequeath to the generations I'm born. Okay. In my, that for me was the platform that I mounted and that's what I want to see the young people do too. We as politicians should distribute inspiration the way we conduct ourselves, the discourse has to be elevated. Mm. And the, the venom has to be removed. We, we can disagree respectfully and all that. It has to be a contest of ideas. And, and it should be so refreshing that younger people should be aspiring to be politicians, mm. not the kind of acerbic tongues that we have seen dominating the political environment these days. And I think the media, you too, you, are, you, you have a role to play as the fourth estate of the realm. And sometimes I don't think the media is searching enough. I conducted over 200 interviews around the country. And I think that the media should have called for a debate amongst the 10 of us because the Ghanaian people deserve to know what is on our minds, what our platforms are, what our priorities are, and what are policy differences and all that? We didn't have that. So how do you expect people to make a decision? Because the party, on? your party was um, going to sift, and then at least your party had mentioned you need a top five. We couldn't have done it when you announced sifting. Now that is done, well, like, we'll get to do it. But, but 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 really, I've coming just back, the Democratic Party in America have about what eleven or twelve candidates have a debate so they talk about the numbers politicians are always quick to always put the blame at the doorstep of the media but we'll get to it you <laughs> talked about the fact that you wanted to be fourth for instance but i've seen the top three were you surprised at the rankings um, that's at least you were you wanted to be fourth w was this the particular ranking you were expecting in terms of the top three were you surprised at alan chairman's performance I've for been instance? around politics for so long from 1992 during the dubois time and that was a, the biggest shock I experienced, the loss to Rawlins in 1992. For me, I don't, I don't assume anything with politics. When you are going into a battle, of course, people do polls. I've never loved polls and given much uh, value to them. But there's a, an election that's most quite close to the poll I saw last mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, is a, an election is only called when it is counted. When it is counted, that is the free expression okay. of the people, the electorate. And for me, that is what it is. Mm. Well, you've been at the helm of affairs of the party before. You've talk, I've yeah. heard you talk about unity, really, um, from what you've seen in terms of the campaigning and where we are now and going into November 4. Uh, will the party have a huge task or will it be easy for the party to stay united and gather around for 2024 from what you've seen so far? Yeah, I think the, we, the aspirants, we know each other. I mean, I have had a call from Kennedy Ejapon last night, Alain Chamartin last night, and I put a call to the vice president this morning to congratulate him on his victory in the first round. And we know ourselves. I mean, Joe Dante is my colleague in school from him, I know I died in him, I've known from a good warrior time. I think we should understand that all of us had a vision to lead our party and to serve our country can. But the decision rests in the bosom of the, the electorate and they have decided and we should respect what their decision. And that's, okay. what I, that's what I love. So all of us, I want to see this party genuinely united. Mm. And that is why a lot of the venom, especially on party platforms, from the backers of various candidates, this kind of intemperate language that is being used. Of course, in politics... But it's coming from your, mm -hmm. your colleagues. You've seen some of your colleagues. You've seen Kennedy Japan. You said you spoke to him. Did you tell him about that kind of language I, that he's employed? I, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard... I, I just saw the videos you're talking about today. I mean, yesterday, I, I just took it easy. I was at home after that. I just took it easy because it had happened already. Okay. So I haven't had a look at all those details, but I think I have someone 
who've always advised against against that kind of language. There should be civility, there should be decorum, you know, and we should elevate the discourse. That's okay. what I'm about. I, I believe in propriety. Let's do things right and inspire the generations I'm born for them to aspire to be politicians like us. Okay, That's in wrapping up, in wrapping up with you, Mr. Kwamenei de Pong, so during the calls, I'm happy to hear that at least you've placed the call to the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Um, are you considering supporting him or throwing your weight behind any of the candidates for that matter? I think it's important that we have two months left for the country in the party, the base of the party, the 200,000 people. They are going to elect. I respect their views. I mean, so um, for now, I'm taking a look, relaxing a bit, um, taking it easy and watching from the sidelines. You haven't answered the question. You're not supporting any of the candidates. I'm a candidate myself. Just I wasn't. But you are out. You are out now. You are out. So when you make the cut. When you are out, you remain out. That's what is important. So you are staying on the fence. You are just going to be there. You are not supporting any of the candidates going into November four. I I think they have all their teams already well sorted out. Sorted out. They are working, and uh, there's no need to go and destabilize anything. If they reach out, if any of the candidates reaches out. So what is important is I am a servant of this political tradition. Okay. Eventually, the party would elect a leader. Okay. Okay. And once that leader is elected, I serve the party. And if I have to serve it through the leader that the party elects, that is quite not a problem. I've okay. been the party servant and a dedicated patriot of the MPP. If you were to I speak, do. if you were to speak to Adeni Muembuache Jako, what would you tell them to do in the interest of the party? And look, I, I went into first room. In first room, we, we respect our seniors. Uh, uh, she was my senior by many years. So, mm -hmm. so it's not very easy to go and advise your senior. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> but Adani Mo is not your senior. So if you were to advise... <laughs> yes, he's your colleague engineer. So if you had to advise him, what would you say? He's a few years my junior, so um, I, I could talk to him. <laughs> what would you tell him? I think uh, what uh, Operanza said is what it is. I mean, they they have personal decisions to make. I mean, okay. going forward, we all have seen the results. Mm. Um, the results are clear. This evidence is there. So everybody's on cue. You advise yourself. In politics, you've got to be sometimes personal about what you want to do and take a decision for yourself and for the good of the party. And I think you should leave them moments of reflection and then everybody takes a decision. Okay. We're indeed grateful for your time. We wish you all the best. Mr. Kobinei Japan. of course, we'll get to interact further, as always. Um, thank you so much, and we wish you all the best. Uh, so that's um, Kobinei Japan there interacting with us uh, via Zoom. And Mr. Frederick Oparianza is still with me in the studio, thankfully, keeping me company. So um, let's talk about, you were addressing the issue about vote buying, and um, you insist that that's not the case, but you heard him also, subsidies of a sort that's giving any time and you've been to the entire country so how much in subsidies do you think? let me let me say that my view on this matter is a very public matter mm -hmm. we have a certain culture in this country and uh, all sometimes some of the things that put us in bad um, levels on the uh, corruption perception in this it's also how we ourselves uh, put information out mm -hmm. Can you go to any chief's palace without carrying a bottle of schnapp and an envelope in this country? Mm. Does that constitute bribery? They don't vote, do they? I'm just asking, but they vote. When you're going for general elections, we visit mm. chiefs, and so am I bribing them or trying to influence their decision? No, it is what we do. Mm. See, in the US, for instance, when uh, somebody is in public office, people go and lobby them to take decisions. Those lobbyists, they license them. They charge fees, they pay taxes. Now, if I'm in public office and somebody goes to talk to my friend or brother to come and lobby me to do something that will help the country, but then they are probably going to benefit in the business sense. Mm -hmm. The moment it comes out, that is bribery, it's corruption. Mm -hmm. In the US, they've legislated, they are taking the money, taking taxes and everything off it, and it is okay. So they are not suffering on the corruption perception index like we are. It's about time that we understand some of these things. Go to Suhum. When you're going for these elections, somebody will come from a place called Afran, so there they were. He will sit on a motorbike to Asarikrum. That one, the charge is 50 cities. Mm -hmm. Then take another one from there to Akrabu, another 50 cities, from Akrabu to Suhum. 
by the time he gets to Suhum to come and meet a presidential aspirant, he may have spent close to 150 cities mm -hmm. and returned the same route. So when he comes to meet you and you even give him or oh, take 200 cities to mitigate your expense, somebody hears and then comes at you that, hey, the guy uh, is buying vote. No, as Kwabna rightly put it, you are only subsidizing the cost of 300 cities that the person incurred to get to come and listen to you. Are we saying that apart from that transportation, nothing else is giving? You're saying now, the other question before is, the election how day, far no, back so do you want to trace and then say that somebody paid somebody to vote for them? Mm. So at the beginning of the year, somebody needed to do surgery, and then I help him with 50,000. Okay. And the election is now. Do you go that far back and say that I bought his vote all the way? Or yesterday, somebody got to this town. I needed a place to play, uh, sleep. And I helped him with 2000 to be able to get a hotel to sleep in. Is it the same thing? We should understand, as Kwabina said, that these things have happened over time. So we should dismiss the comments made by the Hope point, The point, we should, here, should we dismiss the point comments, here is that mm -hmm. in this election, this party was so strict that Nobody could even take a mobile phone to the point of voting. Mm -hmm. So how are you enforcing an influence on somebody to say that I gave you this, I wanted you to vote for me, take a picture, come and show me. Okay. The point here is the persons voting all had the freedom of choice, notwithstanding whatever uh, mitigating monies they might have received to uh, reduce their burden of cost or any other consideration. And that is what we must look at as a people. How free, how fair, and how democratic was this particular process? And I, I tell you, I have been uh, probably the person that has done most uh, primaries in this country. In 04, in 08, I did five primaries. In 2010, in 2020. And this particular election is probably the strictest of the elections that I've ever seen our party conduct. Really? I was there at the polling center in Cape Coast and I'm telling you from there were more police men than there were uh, delegates. That's true. I can tell you for free. There were more security men in and on the campus, the campus security joined forces with the police to assist. It was the same at the headquarters yes, as well. Yes, you see so many security Officers, nothing getting through, and clearly every delegate had their peace of mind to make their preferred choice. And that is something that we must commend. Well, I hope that November 4 sees the same thing, and eventually in uh, 2024, we get the best of uh, elections as we saw yesterday. And the journey has begun. I know that um, you were looking towards getting a 70% of a sort as a team. Uh, you got 68.13 thereabouts. Were you happy with the performance? I'm an engineer, and 5% um, tolerance is always uh, permitted in engineering calculations. Mm. So, <laughs> I made quite a laugh. <laughs> 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 and so, if I was expecting 70%, uh, 5% uh, tolerance there will come to about 3.5. So, if you take that down, uh, I'm still, 68 is still within tolerance uh, mm -hmm. uh, limit. And so, I accept what we got. The important thing here is that um, for a first timer, securing this kind of uh, margin mm -hmm. is quite emphatic. Not only did he secure the overall uh, 68 plus percentage points, he won in all the 16 uh, regional centers as well as the national HQ, all the 17 polling centers he won. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, he won his home region 100%. Okay. And the nearby, uh, nearby regions, the northern savannah and the rest, with significant uh, margins. Mm -hmm. And then our party's anchor bases of Ashanti and Eastin, he won respectively with 82 and 74%. Mm -hmm. One of the places that I was a little shaky about was even the voter region. Mm -hmm. Because when I was with Alan, we knew that was our traditional base. But we managed to win there also with a significant margin. And then Kennedy is very loved in his region. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot to support uh, the party in his region. And so it wasn't an easy 
battle there. It wasn't an easy task there. But we managed to beat uh, Kennedy in his home region. Okay, so, so let me bring in this um, chop bar and um, beer bar talk that we've heard, at least between yesterday and today. Um, the fact that Kennedy Japan was second, at least with this particular race, we don't know if that is what will happen on November 4th. But the concern is that if it were to come down to a partnership between Dr. Baumia and Kennedy Japan, is your team ready for anything like that? Uh, clearly, that will not be a decision for me or the team. It will be a decision for Dr. and the National Council of the party. Mm -hmm. That is where the decision uh, rests. Mm. We may all have our preferences and uh, expectations, but finally it will behove on doctor to name somebody mm -hmm. and then for the National Council of the Party to mm -hmm. sit and say yes, we accept uh, your choice or mm -hmm. we don't and so bring somebody else because uh, he has to do that in consultation with them. Uh, so it is not a decision for the campaign team to even begin to toy with or mm -hmm. for the campaign team to even begin to entertain. Mm -hmm. As at now, we want to focus on the campaign, mm -hmm. uh, we want to strategize, we want to plan, we want to have all the necessary tactics that will ensure that we even do better in November. You have a wider uh, uh, number of voters yes. going into November for, yes. and people have said it will not be an easy sailing like you got it with the super delegates. Strategy changing, what's going to change going forward into November 4? Already when we started the campaign, we were doing a dual prong mm -hmm. campaign. Okay. Um, it had the aspect of the special delegates as we moved, and then the aspect for the November uh, 4. Mm -hmm. If you know, we have done about five regions so far. Mm -hmm. We have 11 more regions to cover. But the five regions we've done cover 154 uh, parliamentary seats, and then it covers also uh, in excess of about 130,000 of the delegates. Okay. So we have some um, about 75,000 delegates more to cover in 11 uh, regions. Mm. So how we started with respect to the uh, broader delegates base, we are going to continue until we finish sometime in October mm. and then recalibrate our uh, strategies to deal with the remaining days before November 4th. We are sure that the strategies we've employed, the tactics we are playing out there, will yield the intended results. Okay. As part of um, unity, though, I would want to find out um, in terms of the candidates. I've just heard um, Mr. Kornaja Pong mention that he had actually reached out and congratulated a few other uh, candidates, including uh, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Are we reaching out? Have we had any other candidates, you know, throwing their weights behind your your campaign amongst others, or it's early days yet? Well, it's early days yet, but today I, I, I had a chat with uh, Adai who is my longtime friend. Uh, we were in school, engineering school together, and so I had a chat with him, and I hope that the uh, discussions will continue. Um, Kwabena, again, I will engage Kwabena, although he wants to sit on the sidelines. I want to assure him our campaign office is not full. Uh, he said everybody's campaign is already in motion. He doesn't want to uh, destabilize anything. No, we have a lot of space in our campaign, and mm. I'm sure he will fit in uh, somewhere. But on a more serious note, uh, I believe that we will engage not only um, the ones that have fallen out, but even those that are remaining in the race. Uh, if it is possible to convince people to see that, look, eventually this is how things will turn out. And so we might as well save the uh, party, the trouble, and, and things early so that we can all have a longer campaign uh, period against the NDC. Okay. Uh, it will be better for the party. So sometimes just joy joining, having chats with people, you can get things done. It doesn't always have to end in elections. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is that Dr. Baumia, as I know him, is the kind of person that is open always to that kind of uh, mm -hmm. thing. He has severally admonished all of us not to do anything that will antagonize other aspirants. And that is why some of us have suffered at the hands of some aspirants. Until date, we are still quiet. No responses from us. People call and ask, but this guy said you are this attacking you here and there, I'll smile at it. Because it's not my campaign, it's Dr. Baumia's campaign. And he okay. says, this is how I want you to prosecute this uh, particular 
campaign. Mm. And so his posture itself is something that is helping to, as much as possible, unite the party even before we end the okay. election. Well, two quick things I'm hoping that we can address briefly uh, before we wrap up because we're really out of time. Well, um, there are those who say, um, I, I don't know if this win uh, for Dr. Baumia in the first round and hopefully um, you're hoping that it will happen in the second round. Is this a deliberate attempt to diffuse the notion or the myth that the NPP is an Akan party? Repeat your question. I'm asking. I'm yeah. sure you've heard yeah. that NPP is an Akan party. It, it is an NDC campaign message. Is it? Yes. Mm. NDC comes to our areas and, you know, I was MP for Suhum for a long time and I have a huge Dangwe area. Dangwe is well, 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 this win probably diffuse that notion you take. It certainly will, because you can tell that since the days of uh, Dankwa and Buzia and Dombo, we have always had the leadership of the party mm. coming from our Akan mm. uh, fold. And clearly when you look at our, um, our election results, it's Ashanti and Eastin, predominantly okay. dominated by the Akan ethnic uh, groups. Mm. And so it has deepened that thinking and feeling. Sometimes we get parts of Bruno and Ahafo, also Akan, and mm. then parts of the Western Enclave, also Akan. Mm -hmm. And then the portions of Central, which is also Akan, supporting our case. And so it gives that impression. But the NDC has actively used this in especially the northern um, uh, areas and the voter region to say that the ND MPP is it's just an Akan, Akan party and so mm -hmm. Shanet. But I'm sure you've also, heard, you've also heard that a win for Baumia makes it easy for the NDC to actually win the 2024 elections. I don't know how anybody by any stretch of imagination... Because they were of the view would. that Alan Chevantin would have done a better job, they say. A better job at winning the election or a better job at governing the country or a better job at doing what? Winning the election? Doing winning the election, in my view, don't believe that we have Dr. just Baumia seen it. will be the one to do that who has shown their strength in our strong homes, mm. in Ashanti and Eastin. It's clearly Dr. Baumia. Who has been able to bring, will be able to bring the much needed votes from other parts of the country for us to win the election. Mm. It is clearly when Dr. Baumia is our candidate, he has now demonstrated, as we, some of us said, that he will be able to mobilize and bring so many votes from the northern part of the country to top up the base that we already hold in Ashanti and the Eastin. Because that myth, you refer to will be broken. It will beat Mahama. Yes. Hands down, straight. One round. Okay. <laughs> it's all for answer. We are grateful. We'll leave it here. Uh, that's you. it uh, for tonight's edition of The Probe. Uh, Frederick Oparanza has been my guest. He's a leading member of the Dr. Baumia campaign team. We also had Kobne J. Jepong, a presidential aspirant in the NPP race, also joining us via Zoom. We also had Justin Kudia Frimpong, the General Secretary of the NPP. We're definitely uh, looking forward to what happens between Adeni Mu and Boache Jack. And like I said, currently in a meeting, we'll get to know what the outcome will be right here on your election headquarters. I am MFA Apau. On behalf of the entire team, many thanks for your company. There's more when you log on to myjoinonline.com. And for radio audience, we have a walk with Jesus. For TV, Prime Take is up next. Please do stay.